This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sander Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, sacred international journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earth walk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X One, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll free one eight hundred six ten seven zero three five. Email X Zone at X Zone Radio TV dot com on all social media sites X Zone Radio TV and our website www dot X Zone Radio TV dot com. Today is the inauguration date for the uh, 45th president, uh, Donald John Trump. And uh, to all our American listeners and to President Trump, the very best. Uh, May peace, love, and spirituality be with you for the next four to eight years. My guest this hour is Matthew Stein, and we've had the pleasure of having Matt on the show many times. He's a great friend of the XO, and he's the author of the highly praised book, When Technology Fails a comprehensive manual on sustainable living skills. As the owner of Stein Design and Construction, he has uh, built hurricane-resistant, energy-efficient, and uh, environmentally-friendly homes. The mechanical engineering side of his firm specializes in product design and development. Among other things, Matt has designed consumer water filtration devices, photovoltaic uh, roofing panels, medical bacteriological filters, emergency chemical drench systems, computer disk drives, and portable, excuse me, portable fiberglass buildings. Matt is a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he majored in mechanical engineering. He is an active mountain climber and serves as a guide and instructor for blind skiers with the Ski for Light cross-country program. And he currently resides in the High Mountains near Lake Tahoe, California. His website went techfails.com. And uh, w- welcome back to the X Zone. Uh, Matthew, always great having you on the show. Uh, you know, Rob, it's always such a pleasure. I really enjoy chatting with you both in our private conversations and on the X Zone. It's always great. Well, you know what? You're one of the hardest workers I know that try to help so many people in so many different venues. And, you know, I was just welcoming uh, President uh, Trump. As, as a Canadian, as your northern neighbor, 
Um, and um, the, talking about Donald Trump, do you see any more direction when it comes to alternative energy within the new Trump uh, um, administration? Well, unfortunately, the Trump administration seems to be like, make America great again. Like, mm-hmm. let's bring it back to the 50s. And and uh, so he's really gung ho for resurrecting coal oh, and wow. nuclear as much as possible and uh, doesn't seem to see the value in the sustainable future of, of wind and, and solar and, and other forms of renewable energy. So. To me, that's a real shame that the people he's putting into his administration seem bent on um, taking us yeah. backward in that direction. Um, instead of may, let's make America great again, he should have, based on what I've seen and heard from from friends in the United States as well as watching the uh, the news media, is that let's make America retro again. <laughs> yeah, I, mm. I think he wants to bring back the days of Ozzy and Harriet and. Unfortunately, uh, they're not coming no. back. And, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see him stepping forward and say, let's let's be real smart about yeah. the future and see where our world's going. I mean, when I was a kid and you were a kid, there was three billion people on this planet. And now there's seven and a half, soon to be eight billion people. And uh, when I was a kid, the uh, when I was a teenager at MIT, they were uh, they published the fantastic book called limits to growth and right. they they ran computer analyses on on a world three computer model and showing that current consumption patterns were going to destroy the natural systems of the planet and it was all going to come crashing down well 20 25 years later they said hey the world's not falling apart see nothing's happening but actually recent analysis of mm-hmm. the world's natural systems show we're right on track we're following the limits to growth perfectly on the worst model, which was the no, no significant action to avoid it. And, uh, and we're seeing right now that 9 out of 10 of every single commercial, major commercial fish species in the ocean is at least 9 out of 10 dead. Wow. In other words, 90% of all major commercial fish that were there when you and I were kids are now gone out of the ocean. So, and we have two thirds of the oceans, uh, one quarter of the ocean's coral reefs are dead, and half is in danger of short term, oh near term death, and uh, only about one quarter is really healthy. So, the rainforests of the oceans are dying, the fish Matt, in the oceans are dying. You know, we're seeing systemic collapse headed on the horizon. And we've got to go for our first commercial break. Matt Stein is our special guest, www.wentechfails.com, and we'll both be back on the other side of this break. Whatever you don't go away, you won't want to miss this hour here in the Exxon. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Matt Stein is my special guest this hour. Two websites, Exxon Nation, www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. That's M-A-T-S-T-E-I-N dot com. Matt, what is your biggest concerns that are keeping you awake at night these days? Well, I've got three kind of prime ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, One is the potential for a long-term grid-down situation uh, due to an EMP attack on the United States or an extreme solar storm, which would affect uh, most places around the world except for the deep tropical zones. It would cause massive grid, grid collapse and failure for a long term. Mm-hmm. And when the grid goes down, then all kinds of other nasty things happen along with it. Uh, starvation, nuclear power plants melting down, you know, nothing works. It's you know, no Internet. Uh, the Internet's how we... Yeah diagnose and fix things these days. It's hard to even fix stuff when the grid's down. Uh, Number two in my concern is that nuclear power plants in the United States are aging tremendously. Uh, Many of them have surpassed or are either reaching or have surpassed their original design life of 40 years. And the last one built in the United States was in the mid-1980s, around the time of, of Three Mile Island and then followed shortly thereafter by Chernobyl. And many of them are now being certified and allowed to run for 60 years, and some they're even uh, a petition now to allow to run for 80 years. And uh, on top of the grid collapse, there's, there's various other things, threats of cyber hacking, threats of uh, terrorists bombing, and just the – and also with climate change, there are something like 17 or 20 mm-hmm. different nuclear power plants that are threatened by, quote, 100-year floods. And, and now in the United States, we seem to be having 100-year floods every two or three years because of uh, the changing climate. So so I'm concerned. And then the last one that really, really worries me, and I'm hoping we'll chat a lot about that today, is the ubiquitous glyphosate chemical in our food and water supplies here in North America. Now, many people know glyphosate, the chemical name, by its uh, trade name, which is Monsanto's Roundup. And what they don't realize is the massive amount of data from around the world on huge negative health effects from uh, glyphosate and the fact that in the United States, at least, it's been allowed to be sprayed on all of our crops with GMO crops, they're sprayed throughout the growth cycle. 19 out of 20 pounds of GMO crops are designed specifically to be glyphosate resistant. Uh, glyphosate kills plants, mm-hmm. makes them wither and die. And it's a weed killer, but it kills all plants except for GMO resistant plants that have special genes spliced in so that they can survive it. And then they're also using it now as a desiccant, which means a drying agent so that Say you have grains, like uh, there are no GMO-approved oats or mm-hmm. wheat or rye or barley right now, uh, but, they're, but they're using it. They're spraying it at the very end right before harvest, so you get a maximum dose of it. They're spraying it on these plants, and so that the stalks wither and die and the grain dries on the stalk, 
And then it's easy to harvest. You don't have to worry about it molding. You don't have to worry about special storage issues and problems with wet grain because it's no longer green because it's dried. They killed the stalk and it's dried on the stalk. Hmm. But what you do end up with is enough glyphosate in a bowl of Cheerios to act as a broadband antibiotic that kills the probiotics in your gut. So we're seeing huge, wide-ranging health problems in America. I mean, Rob, when you were a kid, yeah. had you ever heard of celiac disease or gluten intolerance? I mean, did never. you ever hear about it? Never. I never did either. No. My, my kids have bunches of friends that are gluten intolerant, mm-hmm. and friends of mine have developed celiac disease in their later age. Never happened when we were younger. And autism, how many kids did you know who were autistic when you grew up? Not I mean, one, Matt. I didn't know a single one either. So, and how many obese kids did you have in your school? None. None, okay. S- glyphosate is linked to obesity, mm-hmm. celiac, gluten intolerance, tons of bowel things. Uh, kidney and liver failure, and a wide range of cancers, all of which we're plagued with in our society now, but none of which were we plagued with when we were kids. I mean, people got cancer when we were kids primarily because they were smokers. Those are like the only people I knew who got cancer when I was growing up. And and then you you did hear the odd case of um, ovarian cancer. The very Hmm. odd case. And the only reason I know this... And occasionally breast cancer, but really rare when I was growing up. Exactly. just didn't happen very much. And now it's like all over the place. I mean, I think they say one in two people in America, people in in the United States, will will suffer from cancer within their lifetime. One in two. I mean, that just is kind of a mind-blowing statistic to me. Matt, having having Roundup used on the wheat, wouldn't it also be logical to say that because of the use of of the um, glyphosate, in the agricultural industry, that it also gets into the water, into the groundwater. Oh, most certainly. Yeah. It's showing up in samples of groundwater throughout the United States. I think it shows up in about 75% of the samples now. Hmm. And oh so it's in the groundwater. But much worse than that is the concentrate. The concentrations they legally allow in food are something like 14,000 times greater than what they allow in your drinking water. So what I don't get is why our drinking water is so limited in terms of what safe amounts of glyphosate, and yet they allow that in our foods, you know, in, in a thousand times greater concentration than in our drinking water. And, and it kind of boggles my mind. But when you look at how the tentacles of Monsanto has reached and their, and their uh, lobbyists have reached into the government coffers in both the Democrats and the Republicans, then you start to understand why um, they've been able to get these kind of wide open regulations that allow huge amounts of glyphosate in. So, you know, the only real way to avoid it, and, and you still can't avoid it in your water, but you can at least avoid it in your food, which is, like I said, they, they allow thousands of times higher concentration in your food than in your water. Um, is to eat organic in the United States. I mean, I'm not sure about Canada, but they, I, and in many parts of the world, they've totally banned glyphosate because mm-hmm. the the World Health Organization has now declared it to be a probable carcinogen, which on five stages of of carcinogenic labeling, that's next to the top level of carcinogenic, and uh, and there's lots and lots of data now. Mm-hmm. You, did you remember seeing the picture of those giant of those rats with horrible tumors all over their bodies? Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. So when when that scientific study got published in a renowned journal, um, Monsanto scientists jumped all over the people, and they mm-hmm. got them to take that. They claimed that there was not proper scientific uh, procedures employed, and they got that journal to rescind the article. Well, that article then, it was a French um, article, was then you know, peer-reviewed by numerous other people and resubmitted to a toxicology journal, scientific journal. And all, every single non-Monsanto scientist that reviewed it said, hey, there's absolutely nothing wrong with their procedure or their data or anything. And they, res- they, you know, it went through extreme peer review and was, was republished. But in the meantime – by the fact that they had gotten Monsanto had gotten the original journal to back down and rescind it, 
that's what the press dwelt on was, oh, see, it was a bogus article and it's been refuted by scientists. And <laughs> but the truth of the matter is the only scientists who picked on it was were Monsanto employed scientists or scientists that got funding from Monsanto. And and uh, the review of scientists from around the world said, hey, there's nothing wrong with this data, nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly done right. And it survived all scrutiny in the m- most minute detail. All right, so what do we know about Monsanto, that they have the power, the pull, to keep something on the market that is endangering the health and welfare of American citizens that the World Health Order has said is, is uh, you know, close to being a carcinogen or is a carcinogen? It's that, a probable carcinogen. So, the so, data how, so how shows mm-hmm. leads towards it being cancer causing. Okay, so how Tons can of- Monsanto keep this keep this in in use how come the government hasn't yanked it where well, they, where, the where's the fda done it, one of the ways they've done it is that they provide all the data to the fda and the epa mm-hmm. on which it was originally approved and they did all of their scientific testing on pure glyphosate but in actuality they add something called adjuvants to it so it's a thousand the glyphosate they they claim that it's 40% glyphosate and 60% inner ingredients, but those are the adjuvants. And yet glyphosate is not very effective as a weed killer until you add the adjuvants. And it turns out in toxicology studies when they, when they put this stuff on cells and look at them under a microscope, mm-hmm. it's a thousand times more toxic in its roundup form with those 60% so-called inner adjuvants in there than it is as pure glyphosate. So all of the toxicology studies were provided to the FDA and the EPA by Monsanto and by Monsanto scientists and all done with pure glyphosate, not in its form which it's used in, which is Roundup, which has those adjuvants added into the glyphosate to make it more effective. So it kills weeds, but it also kills people. Well, here's the way it works. I mean, my background as a mechanical engineer, most of my work these days is Mm -hmm. expert witness work in patent cases. And so I understand patents really quite well. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm an engineer, and I have a dozen patents to my name. And I've now been employed something like 20 times in different patent litigation cases. So a a, a chemical can be patented multiple times, unlike an invention. Invention, you patent it once. Then you can patent an improvement on it, but Mm -hmm. the original invention, that's it. With a chemical, if you come up with a new and unexpected application for it that's like totally different from what it was originally designed for you can patent that same chemical for the new for the new application hmm. so for example in glyphosate's case in the 60s Stauffer chemical group um, patented glyphosate as a descaler for hot water boiler pipes and what they found was that this chemical when you put it in your boiler systems it goes and uh, the boilers get all of these cakes of it's called lime and scale that that uh, plates out on the pipes and start plugging the pipes of the boilers and the and the hot water systems and so glyphosate they found bonds and strips those minerals and metals that are plated out in the sides of the pipes so it cleans it literally cleans your pipes out so uh, roughly 10 years later Monsanto comes along and they figure out that that same action of bonding to those chemicals, to those metals and minerals in the pipes, when they spray glyphosate on plants, it bonds to critical metals and minerals that are necessary for certain key plant enzymes that that allow for photosynthesis and plant life to survive. And so when they do that, the plants don't have those key, you know, those minerals get, get chelated or stripped out by the glyphosate, bonded and taken up by the glyphosate, so the plant can't can't access them and the plant dies. So they they so that's the next step in the evolution of glyphosate. So then they figured out, well, you know, when when they have a farmer's field mm-hmm. and they spray glyphosate on it before planting, then it kills the it kills the weeds in the field, but then they go plant their corn or their wheat and the weeds start sprouting. But at the same time the wheat sprouts, then um, some weed seeds that were out there sprout after the glyphosate's already like gone away. All right, we're going to have to and, have a bit of a uh, cliffhanger here, Matt. We've got to take okay. a break for the news at the bottom of the hour. Exonation, Matt Stein is our special guest. www.wentechfails.com. 
and www.mattstein.com. He is the author of When Disaster Strikes and When Technology Fails, which are available online everywhere. We'll be back on the other side of this break. My name is Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Wow, now I know why everyone in Canada goes across the border to get Roundup by Monsanto, because you cannot get the same strength of Roundup up here in Canada. Unbelievable. Matt Stein is our special guest, Exxon Nation, www.wentechfails and www.mattstein.com. Matt, uh, what is the... Yeah, all right, I understand Monsanto is a very big company. It has its its uh, corporate tentacles right around the world. It's diversified into many subdivisions and uh, independent corporations and holdings. But why is Monsanto allowed to get away with what it does get away? Like I've heard horror stories about Monsanto over the past 25 years doing this show, and it seems that nobody can touch them. Well, I think it's just their donate, you know, it's kind of like the Israeli uh, political action campaign. You know, they they know that if they donate to both sides of government heavily enough, then they'll mm. be protected and uh, and they'll get what they want. So they get a, a huge return on their dollars, you know, donate a few million and get back a, a few billion. You know, it's a pretty good return on investment there. It, um, it, it, and they have these scientists on staff that published report and data that just um, overloads the FDA and EPA with data showing how safe and how great it is. And so the these other things, back in the 80s, when they were getting initial approval, there was concerns that it was carcinogenic. Mm-hmm. And they just flooded them with their own data showing it wasn't. And those concerns got lost in the shuffle. And now there's enough data coming from around the world but they're just so firmly entrenched in both sides so so what happened in their progression was you know they wanted to sell more it's very profitable so they started developing genetically modified mm-hmm. organisms so that they could uh, these they had plants with special genes in them so they were not they didn't need that single enzyme that was being wiped out by glyphosate they they made it other ways and so now they could spray it six, seven, ten times during the growth cycle instead of once. So now they're selling ten times as much glyphosate. And then they figured out that not only can they spray the GMO crops with glyphosate, then the other crops that are better off when they're dried and killed shortly before harvest, mm-hmm. they spray it on them right before harvest. So it's a big snow job on the part of, of uh, Monsanto that's basically taken in the world. Now, not you know over much of the EU, they don't allow it. And in Russia, they don't allow it. You know, so there's, there's more of the world that doesn't allow glyphosate than does. But certainly, there's still a huge market in countries that have bought into the Monsanto pitch. Is it really necessary for for the GMO market? Well, GMO, 19 out of 20 GMO plants that are grown today Mm -hmm. are glyphosate resistant. That is, they say GMO is to solve the world's food problems and this and that. But the truth of the matter is that, you know, 95% of all GMOs specifically designed for glyphosate resistance, and that's its sole reason for existence, is you can spray the stuff for gly- with glyphosate, and it doesn't die. So hmm. it, it makes it cheap and easy for farmers. They can just keep spraying the stuff, and they tell the farmers it's totally non-toxic. Now, if you talk to the guys in Central America, they're all dying. The young guys in 35s and 40, fun 45 agricultural workers whose ki- liver and kidneys have failed and you know they're they're dying or you know i mean imagine being a healthy agricultural guy at 35 years old and, and a, you know family of six or seven kids to feed and you're dying because your you, your your kidneys are failed wow. and your liver's failed i mean tell them it's safe all right what are the statistics here in the united states in, you know or, or should i say in north america like i said uh, you cannot buy the same um formula of Roundup up here in Canada because of the restrictions set down by the Canadian government. So we have people who cross the border, they buy the Roundup there, they smuggle it illegally. Those who have tried to smuggle, and this is a fact, I I just, uh, my producer checked with uh, Canadian Border Services, those who try to smuggle or bring across illegally um, uh, weed killers that do not meet Canadian specifications. They get them seized the first time, and then they can face fines and or imprisonment. Wow. See, um, not, <laughs> not I don't live in Burlington, Vermont anymore yeah. like I used to, where I was 50 miles from the border. Yeah. So we were smuggling fireworks back into America from Canada. and uh, <laughs> Yeah, they, they were so the good I, old days, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm not really up on the glyphosate mm-hmm. smuggling across the border. I mean, that's just something I hadn't even been aware of till you brought it to my attention right now. So I can't tell you any yeah. stats on what makes our glyphosate better than your No, glyphosate. but what, what about the, the health of the agricultural worker in the United States? How is it being uh, affected by, by glyphosates? And are there any studies and statistics that you can share with us? Well, I don't know of studies and statistics, but I will tell you that down in, in California's Central Valley, mm-hmm. I talked to someone who lived in Marysville, and he said everyone's got cancer. Oh, my gosh. Starting in their 40s. He said, you know, his brothers died of it, his sisters died of it. You know, I mean, every family has multiple members with, if it's a decent, you know, a a, a mid-sized American family, they Mm -hmm. all have multiple members of cancer. And so in, if he said, it's so bizarre because you look around and everything is so lush and so green and the crops look so great. Now, how much of that's glyphosate and how much of that's pesticides? You know, I can't say for sure. But I can say for sure that the glyphosate is a significant contributor. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, liver cancer, Parkinson's disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a whole multitude of cancers that are specifically – Parkinson's is not a cancer, but that, but that has been – Parkinson's is, is linked to glyphosate and, and the celiac and the irritable butt. So the last, the last part of the patent scam – is that in 2003, Monsanto applied for a new patent, uh, for a new application for glyphosate. And it took a very long time to get this one granted. It wasn't granted until 2010, which is unusually long. So there had to be a lot of back and forth between Monsanto and the uh, PTO, the Patent and Trademark Organization. And so what this one is for is for a broadband antibiotic. So it turns out that that same chelating or stripping function where the Monsanto glyphosate bonds to the metals and minerals that cause plants to wither also kills certain bacteria, most bacteria, in fact. And it turns out that the two bacteria that are glyphosate resistant is salmonella and C. difficile. Now, salmonella and C. difficile are now a big deal because what's happening is we're feeding all this GMO glyphosate-laced feed to mm-hmm. animals, yeah. and, there, and it's killing the natural good gut bacteria in the chickens and the pigs and the cows that they need to digest food well, and but yet it's allowing C. difficile and salmonella to go crazy. So to compensate for that, they pump them full of antibiotics. So when you buy your non-organic meats and dairy products, you're getting – not only are you getting your, your daily dose of glyphosate, you're also getting mm-hmm. – Lots of antibiotics that have been pumped into these animals to keep them alive because of the glyphosate they're eating. Now, the other side part of the pumping them full of antibiotics is it makes them fatter. So, you know, look at so look at that. So they're they're making their animals fatter, and they're keeping them alive with antibiotics, and they're feeding them all this glyphosate laced. And now, what happens to the people who eat it? The people who eat it, their probiotic gut bacteria are messed up totally and out of balance. And when your probiotic gut bacteria are messed up, you can't digest and assimilate food properly. So you keep eating more and more food. Your body says it's starving because it's not getting the nutrients it needs. So you keep eating more calories. Your body says you're hungry because it, it's starving for nutrients. So it keeps and the more eating you eat, eating. the more you gain weight. And even though the body says that you're not getting the nutrients, you keep on eating food. And it's, it's a cycle. It is. It's a cycle, and it's a cycle. And obesity leads to increased problems with cancer yeah. and, and, and diabetes and heart disease and, and a whole plethora of problems that didn't used to be around 40 years ago. Okay, so once again, my question is, why doesn't the government do something about it? Because they are blind to it they got a lot on their plate Mm -hmm. and because the scientists and the data provided by monsanto and the money provided by monsanto helps them turn a blind eye to the data that's coming from around the world indicating otherwise you know you've got organizations uh that do everything from uh you know signing petitions to end the disclosure on the uh, hidden truth or the uh, the lies being told by the government about UFOs, this, that, and the other thing. I haven't heard about any organization or any movement to shut this down, to, to get the glyphos, uh, glyphosate uh, phosphate out, out of the food industry. 
Oh, it's it's totally there. I get the emails from these guys every day, and, and yet mainstream there's media food doesn't. democracy now. But there's, mainstream there's media the doesn't cover organic, that. you know, organic organizations. Yeah. There's there's it's it's out there, but they don't have big money behind them. You know, the big money is in the giant chemical companies, not in uh, grassroots organizations. They're fighting the giant chemical mm-hmm. companies. And yet, I haven't heard any of these. Uh... These organizations mentioned in mainstream media, or is that part of the buyout that Monsanto is involved with is also advertising dollars that goes into the media, so the media feels reluctant to report on the negative aspect of anything Monsanto does? That's right. You hear it all over the alternative news Mm -hmm. on the Internet. I mean, I see articles on this all the time in the alternative media, but then they, they, they jump on. You know, there's an active program to go and discredit um, scientists who speak out. I mean, there was a there was a, a professor emeritus at Berkeley University who published something against them, and they they campaigned to have him lose tenure and get fired. Now, students and people spoke up for him, and he didn't get fired. But there was a huge campaign on the part of Monsanto employed scientists to discredit this guy and get him fired from Berkeley. And that's the kind of action that they do. They go around and jump on them. There's uh, Stephanie Seneff from MIT, where I went to school. Mm -hmm. She wasn't there when I was there, but she's published a a tremendous amount on this issue, and she's showing the links between the growth in certain diseases, a direct one-to-one correlation, 97% correlation, she said, which is mind-blowingly accurate, of data showing increase in glyphosate consumption around the world and increase in specific diseases. And so it's it's a, like a perfect one-to-one graph. They, did, they just match together and mesh together perfectly. So she's extremely active, mm-hmm. and if you look her up, you'll find her papers very immediately, and they'll be copiously footnoted with like 30 or 40 uh, scientific papers sub- wow. you know, substantiating the data that she's citing. So... You know, it it takes a lot to fight against a giant like Monsanto, and you risk them putting their army of people uh, against you to try and discredit you and have you fired from the institutions you work for, and certainly to you know try and get get your funding stripped for all of your research, that kind of thing. You know, it's it's a wonder with all the problems that have arisen about with aspartame, depleted uranium, and now uh, glyphosate, that we as a human race are still around. Not to mention the nuclear issue. Well, we're still around, but um, I'm worried <laughs> that that the trends are that if we continue business as usual, and mm. and I think Donald, the current administration, the Donald Trump administration, is let's go back to like unregulated free market, and, you know, da- you know, full speed ahead, man the torpedoes, and you know, let the giant corporations rule. And I'm concerned that that is a recipe for collapsing the re- the systems of the world we need to maintain life as we know it. And I wouldn't be surprised if 50 years, if there was a lot less of us around than there are today, because the the, the patterns we have right now are leading are headed for a crash and a demise of much, if not all, of the human race. Stand by, my friend. You and I have to take our final break. Exxon Nation, Matt Stein is our guest. www.whentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. Two great books that he has written, When Disaster Strikes and When Technology Fails. They're both available online. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We'll be back as we wrap up this hour here in The Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, 
Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, and of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program. For the secret to everything is for you, the listener. For those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover thesecrettoeverything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. US. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Exonation, uh, Matt Stein is our guest, www.wentechfails.com and uh, www.mattstein.com before we bring Matt back on. Listen, there's a, there's a wacky TV show in the United States called Killing Bigfoot. As everyone knows who has known me over the past 26 years of doing this show, I am an animal lover. I don't believe in killing. I don't believe in putting a bunch of garbage into a TV show just for ratings or just to sell advertising. It is wrong. And if you believe as strongly as I do that killing is wrong, especially a species that has yet to been properly identified, who knows, we may be related to Bigfoot. If you feel strongly about it, go to www.stop killingbigfoot.com sign our petition over 555 people from all over the world so far have signed it I want this show taken off the air it's that plain, it's that simple 
And it's very sad to know that a number of Bigfoot organizations and paranormal organizations have declined to sign the petition because they don't want the petition to ruin the possibility of them getting on TV. That is so pathetic. That is so pathetic. Uh, Anyway, Matthew Stein is our guest, www.wentechfails.com and mattstein.com. Matt, uh, first of all, always great having you on the show, my friend. You are a light at the end of a dismal tunnel, and I'm glad you're there for us. But also, well, thank you. But you and I were chatting uh, off air in the, in the last break. And w- share with our listeners what else Monsanto has been responsible for. Sure. Monsanto has brought us Agent Orange, PCBs, dioxins, and DDT. All of these were materials that they claimed were okay for people at the time. And it was not until... Um, you know, lots of people started mm-hmm. getting sick around these things that uh, that there was a lot of effort to restrict them. So the fact that the EPA and the FDA has been counting on Monsanto data to set safety levels on glyphosate, when you know, if you look back at the at the record for Agent Orange PCBs, dioxins, and DDTs, which uh, subsequently they found were far more harmful to people and and really terrible in the environment and had to be regulated far more than Monsanto had originally had indicated in their data. So I, I think we're in the same situation here where their their data is keeping us in the dark and it's not until there's so many people are sick and unhealthy mm-hmm. and they that the government has to wake up and accept the data from other scientists that anything significant's gonna happen there. Let let me play the devil's advocate just for just for a minute here. Is it possible that when the initial scientific research was done that Based on the data that was being received from the research that was that had been put into the the production and the studies of these chemical elements, that Monsanto really believed that there was no harm to humans. You know, I don't think so. Okay, because there are internal scientists in the GMOs who've mm-hmm. raised concerns at Monsanto and been fired. There is a Putsi or something, I've forgotten his name, but he's, he's, a, he's a famous GMO guy who saw that, uh, he, he decided that just because something looked like food, tasted like food, smelled like food, didn't mean it was food. And he was seeing that, uh, and he felt that all GMO foods must be individually animal tested to make sure there's no long-term harmful effects. And uh, whereas Monsanto pushed the opposite to the EPA and FDA and said, hey, it's all food. Don't worry about it. You don't need to test it. And uh, and what's happening is that in some places in Europe, they've adopted that safer attitude. They've listened to these scientists who said, hey, mm-hmm. if you splice in a gene that makes a plant grow its own insecticide, uh, it's not the same plant anymore. It doesn't have the same proteins anymore. And and to make sure it's safe for people, you know, you wouldn't just try an insecticide and feed it to people. You'd, you'd, you'd test it. But yet we, we grow a plant with built-in insecticide and feel like it t- looks like food and tastes like food, so therefore it's okay. He said no. And it turns out if you have a, a field of GMO corn next to a field of non-GMO corn, that wild geese will flock to the field without the GMO and will t- not touch the GMO corn. Mm. And if you have a trough of GMO corn and non-GMO corn, the cows will eat every bit of non-GMO corn before they'll touch the GMO corn. So animals instinctively know the difference. And in fact, a bushel of corn was something like 57 pounds for the, ever since they weighed bushels of corn. Now a bushel of corn in America is 55 pounds. And, and the huh. two pounds are missing is minerals that are no longer in your corn. So you're not getting the nutritive value of those two pounds of minerals in a bushel of corn is gone. It, it's just not there anymore. A, a new bushel is now two pounds lighter than it was for a hundred, you know, a couple hundred years or however long they've been weighing bushels. And, and, it's, and it's different now because corn, 19 out of 20 pounds of corn in America is um, GMO corn. So it's missing those two pounds of minerals. So the food is not the same. It may look the same, taste the same, smell the same, but it's not the same. On the... Um on the 
contents, uh, the, the food content listing that is on all food packaging these days, is um, glyphosate mentioned? Oh no, that that's never mentioned. That's in, in the the broadband antibiotic patent says mm-hmm. in one part per million of of level of glyphosate, it's effective as an antibiotic. And in Cheerios, you get about three parts per million now. Cheerios oh, turns out to be about the highest of of some independent lab testing of of some common American foods. Cheerios came out at the top of the chart, and Cheerios specifically says non GMO, like it's a big deal. And they may be non-GMO, but they're sprayed heavily with glyphosate because it's non-organic. It's not organic oats, so they're they're sprayed heavily right before harvest to desiccant them, to dry them out. And so you're getting a huge dose of glyphosate in there. In fact, the dose of glyphosate in Cheerios is more than 10 times what independent studies of chickens found was the level that was disruptive to the gut probiotic gut bacteria in chicken guts – was less than one tenth of the level. It was like 0. 0.075 parts per million, about 0. 0.1 part per million. Yet you're getting like two to three part per million in Cheerios. So that's like a huge difference. Actually, that's 20 or 30 times as much glyphosate in Cheerios as they found was was the a threshold level that disrupted the bacteria in chicken guts in oh in, in in their in their yeah. intestines. What can we do, Matt? Like, how do we fight this? You know, well, besides the organizations that you mentioned. Here on the show today, um, can we write letters to our congressmen, our senators, the president, uh, the FDA, the EPA? What do we do? Well, sir, yeah, I mean, writing letters and saying I'm really worried and concerned that the international data shows how serious this is, and all you have to cite is the World Health Organization, mm-hmm. WHO, um, says it's a probable carcinogen, and yet. Um, Monsanto keeps upping the amounts that can be found in our food. They just petition the government and the FDA, and they up the amount that's allowed in our food because now they're spraying more on stuff. So now they need more. In order to sell the food, they've got to have a higher threshold than they used to have because it's used so much more in the in the crop cycle than it was 20 years ago when it was just a weed killer before they even planted the crops. And eat organic. I mean, in the meantime, you just have to eat organic. Support the organic food movement. I know it costs more. But I tell you, when the, the expense, you guys in Canada have national, you know, single payer health. Mm-hmm. In America, we, we, we still don't have that, and we have, and we're probably going to lose the Affordable Care Act. And my wife, when she got uh, blood bone cancer, um, we hadn't read the fine print. Uh, I'm self-employed, and I thought I had a decent insurance policy. I, I had a six thousand uh, dollar minimum, you know minimum and I had a $10,000 cap. I knew I could handle $10,000. I hadn't read the fine print and the treatments for my wife because of the fine print exclusions were eight to $15,000 a month in uncovered expenses. Oh Lord. So I had in a single year of her medical treatment before she died, there was $150,000 in uncovered medical bills. And, uh, and so if you think about the expense of eating organic, Mm -hmm. think about those medical bills. Think about the expense of diabetes. Think about the expense of, of you know, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Think about the expense of a kidney or liver transplant. Think about the expense of heart disease because you're obese. You know, think about irritable bowel syndrome and celiac disease. And all of these are totally avoidable. And all of these were things that were almost non-existent. They were just a tiny percentage of the population when you and I were children. Yeah. And now it's just exploded. So you know, when you think organics expensive. Look at look at the alternative. Matt, it's always a great pleasure having you on the show. Um, one quick question for you before we go, and this will be a bit of a teaser for the next time you come back on, which will be in a couple of weeks. How likely is an unfriendly nation to the United States, how likely are they to screw with the power grid? Hey, listen, if they could hack into the the uh, DNC and the other government agencies, how likely are they to hack into our power grid system and shut it down? I'd I'd say they're pretty likely. I'd say what's even more likely is that some country will decide to, will get their hands on a on a missile and a nuclear warhead and, and do an EMP attack. And the United States, as we know it, will mm-hmm. cease to exist in that event. Primarily, you know, not just because of the EMP destroying so much electronics that it will take 
a decade to yeah. replace that stuff, but primarily because of causing multiple Fukushima-like events that will poison most of the United States so All right. that We've got to people hold it. will never be able to live there. We've got again. to hold it there, but that's what you and I are going to be talking about in two weeks, my friend, when you come back here and share this information, this important information with everyone here in the X-Zone. Until then, my friend, take care of yourself. Matt, thank you so much for everything you do. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Always my pleasure. Sorry, Exxon Nation. www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. And Matt will be back with us in two weeks. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. I'll be back. Don't go away. Thank you.